Welcome back to our video series on private wells. I'm Molly Flynn, a senior public health educator with the Clinton County Health Department. This video will cover home water supply pumping systems and well maintenance. If you have questions about well construction, I encourage you to check out part one of this video series. Joining me again is John Canoza, Director of Public Health with the Clinton County Health Department. John is an environmental engineer and geologist who knows all of the ins and outs of home well and water supply systems. In our last video, we had drilled our well, obtained a water supply, and water testing samples were all good. So let's start by discussing connecting the well to the home and installing the pump. This can be done by a well driller or a separate plumbing contractor. First, we need to install a pitless adapter connection. Is that correct? That's correct. This item, the pitless adapter, is a 90 degree pipe elbow connection to the well, which allows the well to be connected to the home through a water service line. A five to six foot depth trench is then excavated from the well to the home uh, to accommodate the water service line installation, which is often copper piping. What is the significance behind the depth of that service line? It is very important that your water service line be installed at least five, five and a half feet below grade to avoid impact from frost during winter. Good to know. Let's discuss well pumps. Well, most often a submersible well pump is then installed within the well casing and below the water level within the well. Submersible pumps are preferred as they provide positive water pressure to your home. Suction well pumps are not recommended. Why is that? Suction well pumps are typically located in a home's basement away from the well. They are not recommended specifically because they create a negative intake pressure on the well piping and water service line. What does the pressure tank do? Well, the pressure tank is typically installed within the home about 60 to 120 gallons in volume. It serves as a reservoir for water pressure and water use in your home so that the well pump does not need to operate every time water is used in your home. Okay, we're getting there. Will you review the final steps in the installation process? Sure. After your well is installed, developed, and disinfected, a well cap is then placed over and bolted to the top of the well casing. The well driller should confirm that the well cap is a firm, sanitary seal over the well casing, but that it also includes an open air vent. The air vent serves to equalize the air pressure between the inside of the well casing and the atmosphere. Your installation is now complete. As expected, periodic checks will ensure a well is kept in good working order. Describe what homeowners should be checking for. Well, regularly you want to check the well base, uh, the base around the well casing. The well base should be sloped down and away from the well casing towards the ground. A concrete base can then be installed by the well driller or self-constructed by the homeowner after the well is installed to better shed uh, rain, snow melt water away from the well casing. At a minimum, the well base should always be checked for voids created by rodents and backfilled with topsoil regularly by the homeowner. Also, open or unbolt your well cap at least a couple of times every year to confirm that the well cap has a firm sanitary seal and that the air vent is not obstructed, and also to remove any insect nests that may make a home in your well cap. And if your well pump stops, contact your well drilling contractor. Correct. If you're planning to build a new home, Clinton County Health Department staff can answer questions about the information presented in this video. But if someone is looking at purchasing an existing home with an established well, what other recommendations do you have for them? If you're purchasing an existing home, ask the current homeowner to provide you with a copy of the well drilling log. If it is not available, ask the homeowner to research the information to try to find the well log. Uh, local well drills or possibly the DEC office in your area may have a copy of that well log. At a minimum, it is important that you ask the current homeowner about the history of their well and water use, any well, well water problems that they may have had in the past. In addition, ask the current homeowner for any recent well water lab test results that they may have, and also if they've made any plumbing repairs in the last five to 10 years. It is also good to know the age of the current well pump and the well or the water pressure tank. Bottom line for maintenance, what should a homeowner do if they notice a change in water quality? That may be a change in odor, a discoloration, or a taste. I would say you would want to record the changes, including the dates, uh, over time. If your water quality change continues or worsens, contact the well driller to discuss this matter. If your well water has a petroleum or farm manure odor, stop using your water and immediately contact your local health department to discuss such issues. Periodically, the Clinton County Health Department has funds available to assist homeowners with well sampling and or testing for total coliform uh, or E. coli bacteria. 
please visit our website to inquire if residential well sampling and testing is available. Thank you, John, for walking us through pump installation and private well maintenance. And thank you for watching our video. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel for more videos highlighting other commonly asked health-related questions.